What's up? It's Jeremy Picker from Amber Creative. This is Deanna with In The Zoning and Prank Girl Mafia. This is Ray Weiss with Printing the Night of the Lion. You're listening to the Two Regular Guys podcast. Hosted by Terry Combs RG, regular guy from Aaron Montgomery. The place to be for industry news. The best dad jokes on earth, along with relevant topics to apparel decorators. Fashion to the people. All right. Welcome into the show. It is Friday, April 5th, 2024. I'm Terry Combs, and you can find me at terrycombs.com. And I'm Aaron Montgomery, and you can find me at oursuccessgroup.com. And uh, my mission is to inspire you to build a business that you love. Um, so we get to talk about something that, yeah, you're going to have to keep me under control here today, Terry. I uh, <laughs> This is something that I, uh, I know that we... Uh, I love talking about it just because it does make us think a little bit more. But the other part is, you know, our intention today is we're going to try to do our best to tiptoe lightly around some of the current discussions that we're seeing and kind of give our take on the growth mindset. Um, we just, I don't know, for me, for sure. And I think you're seeing it too, Terry. We're just kind of seeing a divide between the successful people and those who are worried and coming from this scarcity mindset, right? So um, I said tiptoeing lightly. I don't know if that's really a strength of either of ours. <laughs> uh, so uh, we'll, we'll see how it goes. But uh, yeah, getting to talk about this, we're, we're going to bring in some current things. Um, I guess the other thing we had uh, a different show scheduled and again, kind of on topic here, lots of things kind of changing in the industry. And, and you know, we don't know all the details, but uh, yeah, so we uh, said, you know what, we're going to still have the show, but we're going to talk about it from a different avenue here so we'll see how it goes i think it's going to be awesome today yeah basically uh the uh, email that i sent to our guest uh came back as uh, he doesn't work here anymore so <laughs> totally fits yeah. into our topic today yeah yeah so we'll, we'll, and you know there that's that's one there's other stuff going on yeah so anyhow uh it's going to be a great discussion though terry and uh, you know, as usual, we we wrote down some notes and things like that. And then we're like, oh, we're going to have enough to talk about. And then but the reality is we're going to have to keep this from going into overtime. So we'll see. <laughs> when you shared the fact that you have visuals, I, I knew that we were good to go. So <laughs> <laughs> that's right. That's right. All right. Well, make sure you stay till the very end. Uh, get your helping of the secret sauce. I'm cooking up the sauce today. I'm going to be a screen printing topic. I'm going to be talking about emulsions and no roadblocks to production. So nice. give nice. you my thoughts on, on emulsion. Uh, Non-screen printers are like, oh, my God. And uh, <laughs> screen printers are like, I want to hear about this. <laughs> yeah. 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 I, still, I still believe that even if you're not a screen print, because, you know, let's be honest, I'm not. <laughs> but I still learn something because, you know, it allows us to, to, you know, this is the world that we're in. So we have to understand what's going on and and uh, whether you're a screen printer or not there's always good information there so yeah um, absolutely yep yep and uh, real quick uh good morning to everybody that's tuned in we'll, we'll come back and catch you guys in just a second but uh we've got adrian from dtfprinting.com uh, ready to deliver the news are, are you ready for that terry i am uh, aaron has a question or eric has a question here for you in uh, in the notes here no, we're, we're, we're covered. We're covered. I, I, I think we're good. So we can, we, we can go whenever you're ready, Eric. Here's the latest news from DTF printing. Haynes and Gildan owe $2 million to workers in back pay. The worker rights consortium has announced Haynes brands and Gildan activewear are among a list of companies that have illegally withheld $2 million in compensation to 831 factory workers in El Salvador. The employees manufactured clothing for Gildan, Haynes, and Specialized Bicycle Components, a biking apparel brand. Gildan has now agreed to pay $1.3 million of what was owed to the workers, which is two-thirds of the outstanding balance. By not immediately paying all wages and terminal compensation upon the factory closure, which happened two years ago, Haynes and Gildan violated El Salvador's labor law. Speaking of Gildan, the Gildan Activewear Board has decided to put the Canadian Blank Apparel Company up for sale and is in talks with multiple bidders. This decision was made by a special committee after receiving a confidential interest to purchase Gildan. 
Over the last five weeks, Gildan has received a takeover approach from a potential buyer. The company mandated investment banks, RBC Capital Markets, and Goldman Sachs Group to look for additional bidders. And finally, Canvas Inc., a custom apparel platform for college students and athletes, announced it has closed a $2 million funding round. The round was led by Scrum Ventures, an early-stage venture capital firm based in San Francisco. This new round brings Campus Inc.'s total fundraising to $4 million at a valuation double its previous investment round. The NIL Store Network currently boasts 9,000-plus athletes across 57 schools. The funds raised will primarily fuel the brand's rapid expansion and support the launch of another plus 40-plus schools in 2024, while also advancing technology to enhance athlete engagement, according to Campus Inc. You can read more about Campus Inc.'s journey with DTF Printing in our Shop Profile Spotlight and read all of our industry news at dtfprinting.com and by subscribing to our weekly newsletter. Have a great weekend! All right. Wow. Um, Gildan, interesting yeah, news it's, there. Hey, that's, <laughs> it's, that, was, that was news to me. So Adrian, yeah. I was always always bringing something. I'm like, ah, oh, I didn't know that. <laughs> so It must be that uh, degree she's got. Where did she get that from, Terry? Uh, she got that degree from Ohio University School of Journalism, just like yeah. that. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, did nobody else that has that? <laughs> <laughs> All right. I just wanted to get that in there. All right. Well, uh, we appreciate her bringing uh, that great, infer- not great news necessarily, but just the fact that she's willing to, to come and deliver that. And like she said, make sure you guys get uh, signed up for their newsletter and um you know we're just getting a tip of the iceberg here so go check that out um let's say good morning to the the folks i said good morning kind of quickly but uh let's recognize everybody that's tuned in here live the regulators and uh do us a favor go and share this with uh with your friends so we get some more regulators in here because being as this is a host show, Terry, really what a host show means is an opportunity for us to interact with the regulators that are tuned in live. So exactly. um, let's let's make that happen. But uh, good morning to Cindy. Thank you for being here. And Rena, good morning. And uh, we've got Sheila tuning in as well. Good morning, Sheila and Josta coming in from Sweden. Thanks for being here. And then David. Hello, my dudes. Happy Friday to both. And hope this weekend is awesome. Yeah, absolutely. I'm I'm actually going to get a, a little break this weekend, Terry, for me. I'm going out into nature. I don't, I'm not necessarily a nature guy. <laughs> Some people might know this about me, but um, hiking, camping, what are you, what going, are you doing? going on a, a, a men's retreat up in the Lake of the Ozark? So there'll oh, be a house. Cool. We got a place, a place to sleep, but uh, we're going to be fishing, which me and touching fish, I don't always go so well. So we're going to, you know, I'm going to overcome a lot of fears this week. <laughs> <laughs> well, I've actually done uh, management retreats there at Lake of the Ozark. It's really a great place oh, cool. to, uh, to go and, uh, and, uh, relax and, and uh, get some things accomplished. So uh, good luck with that. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah. I'm going to have a, have a great time there. And my dad calling me at, uh, yeah. I mean, we've only been doing this for 12 years, Dad. 12 Come years. We <laughs> <laughs> got the phone. Uh, yeah, yeah. All right. Well, um, we've, we've got to fulfill our obligation to the dad joke here. Uh, I did just flip the calendar. I was a little late flipping the calendar, my dad joke calendar that I have over here. So I just realized I have a whole bunch more uh, uh, things to work from, but we'll, we'll leave those for a later time. So. Um, and, Terry, we are live in Ghana, West Africa as well here. The two regular oh, guys sweet. are. Yep. So there we go. Um, thank you for tuning in. Okay. We ready? You ready, Terry? Yeah, let's hear it. Seat belt buckled. Okay. <laughs> yeah, Terry, I don't know if you knew that. Oh, you know what? Sorry. I missed, I missed our cue. Eric, whenever you're ready. It's like I've never done this before. All right. <laughs> All right, Terry. So I don't know if you knew this, but I actually invented an air freshener that is controlled by your mind. I did not know that. Yeah. It makes sense when you think about it. (laughs) For our podcast listeners, Aaron is, or Eric is about to put up sense and sense. (laughs) There it is. is. He absolutely was too. How did you know that? (laughs) It makes sense. (laughs) 
Hopefully. All right. Before we dive in, we want to thank everybody for checking out the Two Regular Guys podcast. And we need your voices still. We would love to have the regulators participate in our show intros. So go to decorators.ink, I-N-K, forward slash intro, and read a few sentences and be a part of the show. And uh, don't be left out. And as Aaron said, we're always looking for new guests. If you or anyone you know would like to join us, go to calendly.com forward slash two, the number two, regular guys, to book a future episode. Or you can email us at info at two regular guys.com with your show ideas. If you are listening to the podcast version of the show, we would appreciate you sharing the two regular guys podcast with all of your industry friends so they can become regulators too. And We would appreciate you giving us a review on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, iHeartRadio, Amazon Podcasts, YouTube Podcasts, wherever you do your podcast listening. And if you're watching us live right now, uh, as Aaron said, this is a a host show, so we would love to have you join in with your comments and your questions. Yes, indeed. Yeah. So looking forward to hearing what your guys' thoughts are on on what makes a growth mindset and whatnot. Um, Speaking of, uh, well, not really speaking of, but... uh, I always feel bad because you're reading along and, and you're kind of sharing all that stuff. And I'm over here like giggling and doing other things. And so I apologize, <laughs> but, but I love seeing the comments and there's typically a, a good follow-up to the dad joke. And Yosta came in this time and said, that was a smelly one. <laughs> <Nice>. <laughs> and then uh, good, good morning, Kim Johnson. Thank you for tuning in this morning. So shall we uh, get on with the show here, Terry? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And and Aaron, let me let me start it off. Um, you were you were talking about understanding growth mindset. You're talking about scarcity mindset. What what's what's the difference? What are we talking about with growth mindset, scarcity mindset? Yeah, yeah. Uh, so a big part of the difference here is is just. I don't know. In a way, it's almost kind of like your your attitude about things, right? If you have a good bad attitude or a bad attitude, right? And and there's days that you're going to fall on both sides of this, right? We, we have certain things that we just have challenges with, uh, things that we have to overcome, right? The, a limiting belief, right? Like, and, and so a lot of times that's what makes a scarcity mindset is this idea of lack or uh, it's not possible. I don't have enough. Am I going to, my business going to have enough to grow? Do I have the skills or talents to be able to do these things? Right. Those all fall into the, that scarcity mindset, uh, the, the concerns, the fears, the shames, the regrets on the flip side of that is the growth mindset. Right. And, and the growth mindset is things like, you know, believe it's possible, um, kind of, that faith, that trust that, okay, I might not know how to do this right now, but I know I will get there, right? It's the, it's not worrying about the, the what or the how, and just kind of staying firmly planted in the why. Um, and the reason why this is important in my mind to discuss is it's a very clear indicator of people's future success. And, and this can be in business or personal life, but you know, what we're talking about for decorators And I think what brought this up, as we mentioned, just a lot of things happening right now in the industry. And we'll we'll touch on on some of those things a little bit more deeply, you know, again, tiptoeing as best we can, but (laughs) I'm sure we'll ruffle some feathers and that's okay. (laughs) Um, But but growth mindset really is about, you know, so I'll use myself as an example. I am an extremely competitive person. Terry, you probably know this about me. (laughs) Um, It's just, it's honestly, it's one of my strengths. And for a long time, I thought that meant I had to compete against everybody. And I had to like, okay, if Terry's doing that, I have to do it and I have to do it better. And what I realized is that was the scarcity mindset. I was worried that somebody else was going to do it better. The growth mindset of my competitiveness is the fact that that competitiveness is to push myself to become a little bit better each day and and applaud, you know, so again, I'm using Terry as an example, applaud what Terry is doing and 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 the the rising tide that lifts all boats, right? So because from that space, now I'm not comparing, I'm not limited by anything else other than my own potential. And and that's what a growth mindset is. So you know, that's kind of the, the high level of it, Terry, what's, what's kind of your, yeah, you, you know, uh, the, this, what came to mind, uh, when we were talking about doing this show was 
just a few weeks ago, and I, I was telling you and uh, and Eric about uh, somebody that that called me up when Epson has introduced this seven thousand dollar DTG DTF printer, and yeah, yeah, and 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 the phone call was, oh great, now every cricket warrior out yeah. there is going to going to be competing with me, and it and that mindset of of um, I'm not a growth person. I'm not. I'm not defining my my own business and my own growth. But I'm I'm worried about everything around me. Oh no, another competitor. It's like uh, it's like, hey, yeah, you welcomed me in as a decorator, but let's close the door behind me. Yeah. I, nobody else, because yeah. because uh, I don't think that I'm capable of competing uh, out there in the world. That's what it really says. Is yes. Uh, yes. if if you are worried about the competition coming on board, then, uh, then you have an issue. And you know, in, in my classes, I always talk about um, pu uh, publishing your prices because most people don't know what it costs to have a, a shirt screen printed. And, uh -huh. and we know in today's society, nobody wants to call and ask you. Uh, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. uh, millennials have to have to work their way up to making a phone call. Like so nobody courage, wants yeah. to ask. And, and, um, and the reason that people tell me they don't publish their pricing is so the competition doesn't know what I'm, I'm selling my product for. Well, guess yeah. what? They know. Anybody worthy of the of the title competition knows what your prices are. <laughs> and, and my response to that is I will gladly give you my prices because I, I don't care if you're a nickel less or a quarter less or, or, uh, or how you want to compete with me because um, I, I have the I have the secret of screen printing, Aaron. Uh, do good work, deliver on time. Do good work, deliver <laughs> on time. Sharing that work, with everybody, Terry. Sh the I competition the is going to find I know, out. I know. <laughs> <laughs> and you know, I've been sharing that secret for years. And uh, and uh, people who who do that uh, are successful, and they don't have to worry about somebody opening a screen yeah. printing or a sublimation or a, or a DTG business down the street because. Uh, they they are of that growth mindset. They're uh, they're building on uh, on on their own skills and their own ability to deliver quality product, and, and not worrying about the everybody that's coming in to compete against them. So yeah, exactly. You know, you, you, I I think you hit it hit it directly on the head there. It's 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 letting go of that need for the external, because like you said, right that that worry about the competition is actually an internal fear that they have about the fact that they're not good enough to compete, right? Sure. Or they're not good enough to bring in enough business to keep their business afloat. They point at the fact that, oh, the competitions, you know, just the, their prices are too low. The, the cricket mom doesn't know what they're doing and therefore they're ruining the market. Uh, what are you doing internally? Are you educating the market? Right? Are you showing the value that you provide? Right? Because I know that you share the sharing your price list thing. I, I think that's great from that vantage point. I uh, sometimes I'm on the flip side of that. Don't share your prices because I think you should just get whatever the person believes the value is. What's the perceived value of it? Right? So, oh man, your prices are only ten dollars, and I was going to pay you twenty. Okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but uh, again, I see both sides, but neither side of that is because we don't want the competition to find out what we're doing. Bring it yeah, you know, Aaron, uh, one of the things that, that I mentioned in class when we talk about business and marketing is, is uh, I always say the beauty of, of screen printing is you can start a, a, a production business for about $20,000. The curse of screen printing is your neighbor can start a production business for about $20,000. So, so you have to go beyond that. You have to... Yeah, uh, yeah. You have to have faith and confidence in what you're doing and, and, and do it well. Yeah. And, and think about what we were just talking about, right? Okay. That's screen printing sublimator, what? 1500 bucks, uh, maybe less, depending yeah. if you go the cheap heat press route that, you know, I mean, they're going to pay for those things over time, but you know, get started uh, cricket mom. <laughs> you know, I mean, it, it was a gift, right? So, uh, <laughs> you, you know, um, Aaron, it's, it's kind of funny. I was talking to, um, uh, a very successful decorator here in Phoenix, uh, actually this week on Wednesday. And, and he was telling me about one of his big customers, uh, very, very big on Instagram and all this kind of thing. And they were kind of chuckling about the fact that, that, uh, on her, 
uh, post, she'll she'll pull a shirt off of a heat press and hold it up. Well, she doesn't do any of that. She owns a heat press, but she she th this company does it all for her, right down to the point of shipping it to the customer. But uh, you know, it's 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 just the way that she promotes her business and what she yeah. does, and and aren't these clever sayings on a shirt? But yeah, she doesn't really do it. It's just uh, it's just it's just all a front. But yeah. uh, but but at the same time, they said she's incredibly successful at what she does, uh, exactly. and, and mostly about. Uh, about her presentation that she does through uh, through uh, social media. Yeah, yeah. Well, that that growth mindset is what opens that up, though, right? We we're not going to be able to have that presentation if we don't have the growth mindset. As Terry mentioned, I I brought visuals. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so if you can zoom in there, that. Eric. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there we go. So it says language matters. Stop saying fake it till you make it, and start saying believe it until you achieve it. Right. And, and I, I think that that's that's also very telling to me of what a growth mindset is, right? because when we fake it right now, we're building that imposter syndrome. Well, I've just been faking it this whole time. The reality is you have not. You're doing the work. You're you're putting yourself out there. You're learning what works and what doesn't work every time you lean in and put yourself out there. I think most of us go back to that scarcity mindset. And that, again, brings on fear and, and worry and, and all that other stuff. And then that makes us, okay, uh, I, I can't be out there in public. I can't share what I'm doing because people are going to think badly of me. I'm worried about this. Uh, all the worst possible outcomes start popping up. And so it's it's shifting back to that growth mindset of like, okay, right? Uh, like hug the haters, you know, that kind of thing, right? So I understand where the, the fake it till you make it thing came from. We definitely want to be taking action. But when you're taking action from what you feel like is I'm just faking it, I don't really know what I'm doing. Like yeah. like with the lady on the heat press, right? She knows what's really going on there, but in she's created that, she's built that, and and therefore she's proud of what she's saying, and and that's what she puts out there. She, you know, that's where she started, and and so she's not faking any of it. She knows how to do it, but she just <laughs> has a partner that helps her, and and I think that's where the growth mindset comes from. We don't we don't have to do all of it. We can have partners. We can you know, have coopetition. I think we've talked about that on this show many times. So, um, yeah, I think at the high level of it, I think we've covered pretty, pretty clearly what the difference is, but, um, yeah. if anybody that's tuned in right now wants to share their, their thoughts, um, we're going to get to David's comments here because he's kind of summarized this really nicely for us as well. So David Haynes from uh, CorelTrainer.com said growth mindset to me means being very open-minded and doing something small every day to get better. Right. Yeah, that, those, uh, that's actually uh, fundamental number 13 in the book is uh, marginal gains, small everyday things to get better. And also uh, selfishness and growth don't go together. Can't do everything alone. Right. Yeah. Um, I think David and, and what they're doing at Corel Trainer are pretty good uh, judges of this. I mean, they've been huge supporters of mine and, and, and working together. And then David also said, I can compete, but I prefer to dominate. Competition is healthy, but dominating is more fun. <laughs> and here's, I can hear David saying that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I can see David doing it too. So. I have visuals as well. Uh, except that mine is just scribbled notes yeah, on my yeah yeah so don't Google don't pad. zoom in on that eric <laughs> <laughs> yeah there's a there's a variety of different comments and things here that yeah. uh, <laughs> remember we said we were tiptoe into this terry <laughs> um yeah it, sheila ryan wrote uh, believe it until you achieve it should be my new tattoo i mean temporary printed tattoo so i don't have to get stabbed there we go. That's what I need. Yeah, I'm I'm right there with you. Uh, needles and me don't get along, but a temporary tattoo, I could do that. <laughs> a henna, maybe is that what they call that? Where they uh, they are there for like three months. <laughs> but, well, uh, you know, Aaron, uh, you and I do know somebody that has the uh, tattoo that he got in the seventies. It says "Keep on trucking." So uh, yeah, no matter how how current you think that tattoo is going to be at some point in time it's going to be uh, it's it's going to have lost its luster <laughs> it's going to be like keep on uh, trucking. <laughs> uh, all right well terry let, let's let's get into a little more specifics here then right so there's been as we've kind of alluded to some industry developments conversations 
you already talked about one of them a little bit in the, you know, this new printer coming out that everybody is so concerned about that, the, how it's going to flood the market and yada, yada, yada. That was one thing. Um, you know, DTF has been a massive uh, talking point. Um, right. and, you know, so you, we saw some market. things recently where some people that have been in the game for a while are feeling uh, all of that happening. And so they're trying to do things to kind of keep on top. Um, we've had a, a really, um, what, what I would call one of the big three, maybe four top sublimation distributors announced that they're going to be shutting things down. Um, in fact, it's, it has been announced publicly. So if you had not heard, yeah, there was an announcement that David Gross from Condi is planning to retire and uh, they will be shutting the doors. They haven't announced an official date as far as I've heard, but um, probably end of this month, end of April is what uh, what kind of is floating around out there. So if, if you're looking for sublimation supplies, it's uh, everything must go sale right now. Yep, so. yep. And you do have to call them or email them. Um, you can't just go buy it on the website. It's still regular price on their website. So um, anyhow, that's been a big consternation. So I, I'm in. They've got a, a Facebook group that's kind of like their their users group there and I think to me, that's what like was the big flashing point on on what the reason to have this conversation was, Terry, is like, again, I just saw this clear demarcation between, oh, my, I hope they're going to be OK, to, ah, they get it. Right. <laughs> so, um, yeah, again, across the board. But how, how do you asking Terry to figure out how to get us to tiptoe in, but Terry, how do we tiptoe into this? <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I, that, uh, that announcement certainly was a shock and, and it, it kind of made me wonder, um, you know, is, is it something to do with sublimation? Has something changed in sublimation? You know, uh, we at Equipment Zone, we do sell sublimation equipment, not very much. We're, you know, we're primarily direct to garment and, and direct to film, but, uh, <laughs> Uh, it, it made me kind of think, uh, it's something that we talked about um, recently, uh, you know, how has DTG slash DTF impacted the sub sublimation marketplace? And, and, and seeing that happen maybe made me think a little bit that maybe it's impacted more than, than I anticipated that it had. Uh, I, th I think there's certainly uh, still lots of sublimation going on, you know, coffee mugs and things like that. But but the, uh, the the large format all over sublimation, I think um, a lot of it has uh, even more has moved offshore and uh, and not being done here as much, which which brings us back to, you, you know, you you have to keep your eyes open in your business. Uh, well, and, and let me use Equipment Zone as an example. Equipment Zone started out in business 35 years ago. Uh working with a company that that uh, that I used to work for and they would uh, th this company would bring in um, it, it was precision uh, made automatic screen printing uh, equipment and dryers really well known for their dryers and mm -hmm. they would bring in trade-ins and equipment zone started in business by they would buy all that trade-in equipment and they would rebuild it and and sell it as refurbished equipment and that's that's where equipment zone came from but but when um, when direct to garment came about, uh, Harry at Equipment Zone is like an antenna went up. And he goes, "Oh my gosh, this is the future!" and totally shifted gears mm -hmm. and became equipment. It became a, 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 our our former employer, U.S. Screen Print, became our number one dealer in the world for T jets. And and when Epson entered into the marketplace, antenna went up and. Oh, Epson's going to own this because every machine out there is basically a repurposed paper printer. Became Epson's number one reseller in the world for DTG machines. DTF came about, <laughs> antenna went up. Oh, we don't want to be left behind. Let's let's uh, let's delve into this and see where it takes us. And and you know, for equipment zone, that's the majority of sales right now is is direct to film. So. You know, I, I, I'm not saying that, uh, hey, you have to jump on every trend, but you have to be aware and, and of what's happening in the world. And, and and Aaron, let's talk a little bit about direct to film. And, uh, you know, this is something when we were talking about doing this show, I'm pointing at my notes over here where we uh, <laughs> where we <laughs> chat all, all day, every day. You'll be an Eric. <laughs> and and uh, uh, something that that an antenna went up with me with 
nearly everyone that I talk to about buy, buying a direct to film printer says either I'm going to do shirts and sell film or I'm getting into this just to sell film. And, you know, every one of those conversations for the last two and a half years, I'm thinking that we are flooding the market with companies that offer direct to film transfers and, and it's every day. And, uh, and to the point where one of the major suppliers of DTF transfers just announced this week, they're lowering their prices and, and, uh, and, and their prices were six cents a square inch. And it, it's so funny because somebody came up to me at a trade show and said, you know, so that's like $2 for a transfer. So how can you compete with that? And I thought, you know, those folks are preying on the on the lack of education in the American educational system because mm -hmm. six cents a square foot does not equal uh, $2 for a 12 by 12 transfer. It equals <laughs> uh, like $8 and 70 cents for a transfer. And, uh, and so uh, I, I did read up a little bit before the, the show and that that lowering of the price is is really just for quantity orders and, and, and not substantial. But uh, the the market is really getting flooded with people offering that product. And, and so, and, and, you know, Aaron, it's, it's, uh, it's just like everyday decorating. There's, there's, uh, a, as I say all the time, there are lots and lots and lots of screen printers. There aren't very many good screen printers. Yeah. Uh, today there are lots and lots and lots of DTF transfer folks. Uh, there aren't very many good DTF transfer folks. Yeah. It's, uh, you know, buying a machine, having no experience in it and start throwing transfers out there to the public. Um, we're, we're going to have people who get a bad taste in their mouth for the quality of those transfers they're buying. And, and there's going to be a lot of, well, I tried this company. I tried this company. I finally found this company that's, uh, that's going to be doing work for me. But, um, I, I guess, um, some of those, you know, all the folks who said, I'm going to do this because there's a need for it. Yeah. Um, they, they were growth minded. But be aware that there are lots of other people. And, and you know, Aaron, people can compete pretty quickly in this. You know, as again, as I've often said, you know, a screen printer, you can be screen printing tomorrow. Be an expert screen printer. It's going to take you three years. Well, not with DTF, not with DTG. You know, it, it's a it's a 30 to 90 day uh, growth or 30 or learning curve. And yeah. and so somebody could buy a machine today and a month from now be a serious competitor out there uh, in this marketplace. So um, anyway, that's uh, that, that that's one of the developments in the industry that kind yeah. of uh, spawned our having this uh, this conversation. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, I think all those things are, are, are really telling. And, and as you were sharing all of those stories, right in my, so this, this is the way my brain works. Right? I'm picking out the, okay, growth mindset, not growth mindset growth mindset not growth mindset right I, i'm just I'm, I'm seeing all these things coming and believing that there is a market for you to go out and you know okay we're, we may be flooding this but you know there, there's a market for me uh, that very well is true all right but but really understanding from a deeper level like there's this kind of balancing act that we have to have because if we just kind of go blindly without any understanding or knowledge uh, we could put ourselves in a pretty bad spot, right? So people go, oh, I've just got this growth mindset. I believe it. Okay, but you got to do the things to, you know, to back that up, right? We we can't you just... You mean it's not a mantra you say in the mirror every morning? And yeah. it, makes it, so? it starts with that, but then you have to actually take the action, right? Uh, like, I, I can't sit there and say that, oh my gosh, you know, our success group is going to be the greatest thing ever and just keep blurring that into my mirror every morning, right? Yes, I want to start there. But then I need to go out there and prove that, right? I, I need to go out and put it out there into the public, right? I think what happens to a lot of folks is they go and they buy the piece of equipment from, from you. They have what they believe is a great idea, which it very well could be, but then they don't have the willingness to fulfill that growth mindset, right? It, it doesn't just show up automatically, right? It, people are like, well, it's the law of attraction. The, the movie, The Secret, um, was very misunderstood when it first came out, if you guys haven't seen it, I think it's worth a, a watch. Um, it's on Netflix. When it first came out, though, it was all the rage. And everybody's just talking about, oh, I just have to think good thoughts and it's going to show up. 
right? But the reality was that the part that they didn't tell you or the, you know, what I consider the keys to that movie is the fact that, yes, you got to start there, but then you have to do the things to, you know, the, there's action that comes along with it, right? So you have to use that belief. You have to use that positive mindset to say, okay, I can do the thing, right? Like a lot of the businesses that I work with know that to share their business, they need to go live on Facebook. But yet there's this big limiting belief that they can't do that or that, you know, they're going to be look silly or they're, they're not going to do well or whatever the the thing that's holding them back. And and yet they go, oh, but I'm doing all the mindset work. I'm doing all the, the self-care. And, and I go, yes, keep doing that. Don't stop. Now let's take action, right? You, you've done all the self-care. So you're in a place where when you get beat up a little bit, it's not going to hurt so bad, <laughs> but you got to go get beat up a little bit to be able to kind of find it. So I don't know. Again, going back you know, to where I, I, I saw a post this past week on, on Twitter, yeah. X, whatever. I was say, <laughs> people still go there. I didn't know that. <laughs> yeah. well, it, 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 it's a, it's a young lady who's uh, holding up her two diplomas going, I have these two diplomas and the, the only job I've been offered so far was to answer someone's phone. I have two diplomas. I'm not answering your phones. And I thought, you know what? Guess what? Maybe you should. Uh, everybody's got to start somewhere. You have to take a step somewhere. Just answer the phones better than everybody else has ever answered a phone before and 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 make that first step. But, you know, the, the, her mindset was, I have two degrees. I, yeah. I need to start I at the this. top. I don't need to start at the bottom. And uh -huh. uh, we, we all need to start somewhere. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, again, hanging on to what you believe is totally fine. But again, like you, she's not owed anything. Okay, great. Congratulations. You got the two diplomas. That's awesome. Now, what are you going to do with that, though? That, I think, again, it's that it's that tipping point of, okay, I'm, I'm thinking positively. I, I've done done some things, but now you got to go do the hard things. Like you said, answer the phones, right? Be the very best at answering the phones. Um, and and then yeah so I, I totally understand what you're saying there i'm just really still trying to wrap my brain around the fact that people still go to twitter but <laughs> <laughs> i i thought they killed that thing okay all right <laughs> you just changed the name man <laughs> oh, okay all right and maybe that was what it was um okay so we talked a little bit about the the dtf um in, stuff and, and 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 we can come back and hit on that a little bit more but uh why don't can we take a quick break and then we can come back and and put some more specifics into play here and we definitely want to keep hearing from you guys the regulators about your thoughts your take on this again we're trying to kind of marry all this together this kind of like current industry things that are happening and then what you're seeing from that what we can learn from it as an industry to continue to grow and do better, kind of like David had said, you know, get a little bit better each day. So that's where we're heading. And uh, if everybody's good with that, we'll take a quick break here and, and come back. Sounds good. Hey there, fellow small business owner. I'm sure you've heard the buzz about the upcoming Fundamentals Live event. It's not just an event or training. It's a game changer for entrepreneurs like you hosted in O'Fallon, Missouri. Well, it's time to reignite that spark and love what you're doing again. I want to give a gift to the very interested people out there who are ready to sign up today. When you sign up before April 15th, you get an amazing no charge gift. It's six virtual milestone meetings after the event. We're going to start on June 14th. Every Friday, there's going to be a bi-weekly meeting to keep your momentum going if you sign up before April 15th for the Fundamentals Live. Are you in? Are you ready for the gift? Head over to osg.link forward slash fun live to get more information and sign up today. Let's make it happen. All right, All right. Terry. Well, that's 10 days from today to get that gift. And uh, also, if anybody is uh, interested, um, just want to kind of give people a little bit more of a taste of some of the things that we'll be uh, unpacking there at uh, Fundamentals Live. So I'm doing uh, a webinar next week. I actually have three different 
time slots so that way people can pick the time that works for them Tuesday evening, Thursday morning, Saturday in the afternoon, um, doing uh, mastering pricing for profit. So uh, you can sign up for that at oursuccessgroup.com forward slash pricing. I'll talk about it as we get towards the end here a little bit more. Um, not not cool. at, when we're sharing what we've got coming up. So, <laughs> all right. Well, all right, Terry. So I love I love what you shared there. I think that was great that so we got to, to kind of hear what's going on, see that. And hopefully, again, people are kind of thinking about that, like from from their vantage point. Right? Because here's the other thing, Terry. Right? I, I I am fortunate that I get to spend a lot of time just thinking about trying to figure out how to share this idea of growth mindset, stuff like that. Um, you know, so I get to do that every day. You know, other folks, they've got their jobs that they've got to do. Right. This is my job. So um I think the part that is also important to understand is that we're not always going to be in that. It's it's not like you just have to go, oh, I'm just going to always be in the growth mindset and you turn it on and you just make sure that it stays on. Uh, it's it's a balancing act of, of, again, remembering to come back. So we're always going to have those moments where, oh, man, maybe I was the one that you know shared something where I was coming from a scarcity mindset. I, I go back and find things all the time where I'm like, oh, yeah, I, can't, I did kind of miss the point there. So... I guess, you know, that's what we're seeing a lot in stuff. Uh, another example that I wanted to quickly share here, and I get your take. And again, uh, we've talked about DTF powder safety on this program, and I think we're, we've been pretty clear about it. You know, this is something that's been around for years in the screen printing world and and all this other stuff. Well, and again, you got to understand what the motives are, and I always, I always want to look at that. But right. I ran across uh, some folks that were really had this, like, no, it is really bad, um, uh, boy. And, you know, the, the, and they were knowingly selling it and it's giving people cancer and yada, yada, yada. And I'm going, OK, there's a scarcity mindset, right? Their, their business is probably being hurt by DTF. Yeah. And therefore, they're trying to beat up the competition. Right. And so I, I kind of took that and and then I kind of mirrored that with Cassie who we had on the show last week, right? She is also seeing it. So they're, they're saying, okay, they're, this is a problem and we need to address it. We need to hold these people accountable for what they're doing. Okay. And then I got Cassie over here on the other side of it going, Hey, here's a problem. Here's what we can do about it together. Right. And, and so to me, that was the demarcation, right? <laughs> like let's just introduce the problem. That's a scarcity mindset, understanding that we've got a challenge and then introducing potential solutions and being open to other solutions that's a growth mindset so how does that break down for you where do you see that in your everyday life too and the people that you talk to well you know how how that you know we we're also talking about uh you know giants in the industry closing and and i i used to work for a giant in the industry precision was uh back in the, oh, the i think you're talking about me <laughs> the 80s and 90s kidding, I'm um, kidding people please I'm they were they were the giant in the industry when it came to automatic screen printing equipment and dryers i mean they were the guys and and uh and uh about six months into my tenure there they actually hired me away from another company to come and work for them they went out of business and 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 so you think well gosh screen printing must be dead if they went out of business well, no, it had nothing to do with that. It had to do with their mindset of no one can compete with us. We are the giants in the industry. Yeah. It doesn't matter what anybody else is doing. And and to this day, I remember sitting in a in a meeting at a trade show with our 30 people that were working in our booth and and uh, the owner of the company. Um, he was from New Jersey. So uh, it was a it was a profanity laced lecture that we were getting about <laughs> about one of our competitors coming out with uh, with aluminum uh, or some kind of uh, some kind of platens that that were different than ours and uh, and uh, he was saying that that the aluminum we use on and our platens is the same that they use on airplanes so when airplanes start falling out of the sky then I'll say those guys are right and guess what airplanes fell out of the sky I lost my job six months in and, and <laughs> because uh, they close their eyes to innovation that that other people mm. are coming out with. And guess who that was? M and R. M and R uh, was just a little company out of Chicago, and they they ate our lunch. And uh, 
many of the people that I worked with went to work at M and R, and 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 so I, I, you know, I don't know if it's exactly what we're talking about here, yeah, I, but I, I think but, it is, yeah, yeah, but but it was. Uh, you also have to keep your eyes open, and yeah. and say, wow, the, those guys over there, that was a good idea. Uh, Ebsen is a is a great example here as well. When uh, when DTF first came about, they ran scared a little bit. And, and, you know, I sell a lot of Epson printers, but it was, it was, you know, DTF, it's, that's na nasty and dangerous, you know, yeah. you stay away from that. You should be doing DTG. And, and, and it was like, um, it was like a tidal wave coming over. No, DTF is coming. Well, guess what? Every DTG printer now is also a DTF printer. Uh, let's, let's, uh, let's not dog the competition. Let's say, wait, let's, let's embrace it. Um, Dane Clement, yep, talking yep, about AI, talking about and you're, you're yep. thinking the same thing I was. He's <laughs> like, he's like, oh my gosh, AI. Uh, I saw that and I thought, man, I've been a, I've been a, a graphic designer for all my life, and and now people can type in uh, twelve words and and create a graphic, and 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 he said, you know, by gosh, I said, no, I I can't close my eyes to this. I'm going to embrace it, and, yep. which is what he yep. did, and yep. and so. <laughs> I love that you, because I was thinking the same thing. Actually, uh, last Wednesday, Dane did a, a special bonus for our, our success group members where he came in and, and walked through some stuff. And it's so funny to hear Dane talk about it. He like, you know, again, like you said, typed in 12 words, up, up, pop these amazing things. And he's like, oh my God, it's so cool. And I hate it. Right. <laughs> <Just> like, <laughs> he still has that. But, but again, he's open to embrace it and, and, you know, okay, great. We started with mid journey, but there let's, and, and man, we were all just so mind blown, but we wouldn't have had that ability to be mind blown if Dane wasn't first willing to be open to it. And then if we weren't then open to going, okay, okay. Yeah. 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 I can see where, but it, it's not about it replacing. It's not about like, oh my gosh, you know, Dane's like, are artists going to lose their jobs if they don't embrace it? But, you know, he actually said, to be honest with you, the people that create the best art are probably going to be the people that write the best books, right? They write the yeah. best stories. And, and well, so it's like, just, you, you know, Aaron, you and I lived this 19 years ago when DTG came around. And, and, yeah. and I thought as a screen printer, I thought, oh, this was the coolest thing ever. I, if I were still an active screen printer, I would buy one of these today to do all those that. orders. I remember that, you saying that. You, in fact, you said just to print towels. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I would just print. I would just print golf towels with the map of the golf course on it and sell it to every golf pro in in America. Uh -huh. and, and and but so many screen printers came up and go, "Say it ain't so." I spent twenty years mastering my craft, and you can do this by pushing a button. Yes, that's that's the you're you're still going to be able to screen print and 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 even Scott Fresner who owned US Screen where we taught classes there screen printing is going to be gone in two to three years. I'm like, no, it's not. <laughs> this, this is just an awesome awesome tool for us to yeah, use. Yeah. And uh, you know, guess what? Uh, my screen print classes are still sold out every time uh, every uh, eight times a year when I teach those classes, and I tell people. Uh, you know, you also need to do DTG. You also need to do DTF. You also need to do sublimation. You mm -hmm. you have to be able to embrace all these technologies yeah. uh, to 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 grow your business. So yeah. Anyway, yeah. No, I, in fact, Cindy King a little bit earlier said, you know, if you have the customers for that style, you do keep doing it, right? And and I think that's kind of what. You know, I was hearing you say that a little bit in that, but it's about then the expansion, right? So, yes, screen printing is not going to die, but do you need to understand what DTG and DTF does and and how that fits, right? If your customers really love your screen printing, right, what what more can you do? So, the growth mindset and what we're talking about here is is about embracing these changes as an opportunity for growth. It's about expansion, right. and and. You know, even if you're in, at a place in your career where you're not really looking to grow per per se from a business standpoint, I don't know a lot of people are very happy with where they're at. You still need to be willing to to grow, and I think that's maybe what happened to some of these companies, like the Precisions, maybe even Condi, right? That they, they they were kind of got to this pinnacle, and then like you had talked about there, that they just like we we were the thing, 
And then, you know, things started changing. The, the world ha has changed. It's changing faster than it ever has in, in history. Um, and so we have two choices, right? We have that scarcity mindset of saying, I'm going to go back into my cave and, and the way it's always been is the way it should be done. Kids stay off my lawn, <laughs> you know, <laughs> or you can say, okay, like, like Dane, right? Yeah. And it kind of, uh, it irritates me, but I'm going to embrace it. <laughs> you know, so, yeah. um, yeah, yeah. All right. Well, we're, how are we doing on time here? Okay. We're, we're, we're doing okay. Let, let's, let's kind of close this out. I also wanted to go back to Ramona's comment here where this is when you were talking about the the young lady on x that uh, had two degrees and wasn't willing to answer the phone uh she says you work for the degrees now it's time to get the practical education time to learn the business in the real world and that starts at the beginning so um and and jan uh, okay let's let's i like this jan let's talk about this terry jan says it's not only about growth and expansion for me it's been about knowing when to pivot right and so that that's a uh, We've we learned that word um, a few years back. <laughs> exactly. Uh, you mean exactly from the episode of Friends trying to take the couch up the stairs? Yeah. <laughs> pivot, pivot. <laughs> no, not that. <laughs> not where that came from? No, I, I missed that one. Um, there are people yeah. chuckling out there, I promise you. <laughs> <laughs> so then Jan followed that up and said, exactly what you said, taking what you already know how to do, but knowing how other techniques work also, that's expansion. Yeah, exactly. So, um, Terry, any other thoughts on that? No, I just uh, 100% agree. And, and you know, keep your eyes open. And, and, and you don't have to jump on every every new trend or new idea, but but you certainly have to be aware. And, and how does that fit what I'm doing? How does that fit the customers that I'm selling to right now? Am I going to lose those customers? And, and you know, this, this is a, a reality today. It's an Amazon world. Yeah. And and so the number of decorated garments keeps going up astronomically. The size yeah. of our production orders keeps going down, down. So we're just selling lots and lots of smaller orders today. And 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 you have to be able to know how to how to uh, uh, how to service that market. And and, and you know, I, I've said this on the show before. I mean, not not DTF has only been around for a short time, but. But we T-shirt snobs, you know, especially screen printers. I will confess to that. When I first saw DTF, I'm like, eh, I don't know if I like the feel of it. The customers, the end user customers are fine with it. They're like, oh, this is cool. I, I love this. What are the mm -hmm. 17 colors on this graphic? Uh, mm -hmm. So um, you, you, you have to you have to open. And, and I talk to screen printers all the time and say, oh, no, no, no DTF for me. No DTF for me. Yeah, and, yeah. Well, and, I and I'm like, okay. <laughs> But your I customers have a, are buying it. Yeah, yeah. So. I have a young lady um, that is a DTG printer, and yeah, you know, no DTF, no good, no good. I'm like, uh, you're struggling <laughs> with a few things here. I might think about giving that a try just a few times. Let your customers answer that question. Not, you know, I get it, right? You want to hold true to what your quality is, but uh, man, you got to kind of again. It's that. Kind of what Jan was talking about, right? We got to pivot a little bit. There's going to be the right tool for the right job, and I'm not saying that you know she should go away from DTG. I'm not saying that like you're talking about here, Terry. That we need to go away from screen printing. It's not going anywhere. You've perfected that craft. Keep leaning into that. But yeah. it is about continuous growth and expansion. Um, you know, from that, like Jan was saying, that that pivot point, right? Because I mean, heck, just think back to that time. I know we don't always like to go back and think back to the COVID days, but where where the word pivot was used all the time. I mean, if you didn't pivot in those moments, you were going to die, right? The people that were doing the school stuff and and things like that were that, you know, there was not sports anymore for a, a period of time, right? Right. And so they had two choices. They could be mad about it and, um, you know, sit on their hands and just hope that somebody was going to take care of them or they could expand that, you know, the people that were already open and had that growth mindset knew that there were some other opportunities out there. And then, and they were close enough to their customers and willing to say, Hey, what do you guys need? I'm, I'm willing to expand. I'm willing to try something different with you. They, you know, still, I, I still remember back people telling me that 2020 was the best year their business had had at that point. Yeah. Well, you know, and, 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 uh, Aaron, the, uh, uh, I don't know why I'm doing yet another equipment zone, uh, uh, example, but, 
you know, it was it was trade shows, trade shows, trade shows. Yep. Yep. But we also were we're doing webinars. We might do uh, one every couple of months, and and so we 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 were in that. We saw that and, and we're participating in it. Well, when trade shows went away completely, uh, Jay Bissell and I were doing, sometimes we're doing two webinars a week. And uh, and so we just replaced what we were doing over here because it it, did, it no longer existed. I mean, there, was, there were no trade shows yeah. to uh, saying, okay, let's shift gears over here to what we're already doing, but triple, quadruple it. And, uh, and honestly, Equipment Zone didn't skip a beat during uh during covid where a lot of companies were laying off employees and uh we were in the perfect scenario because hey if you're at home uh in, in either not working or working from home what better time to start that side gig what better time to say you know what i'm not going to be i'm not going to be a slave to to having that paycheck anymore i'm going to set my own course and so i, I had months where I sold double the amount of DTG printers that I had ever sold in in months prior to uh, yeah. prior to COVID. So yeah, and, but here's here's what I think the real key is in that whole thing, right? So okay, you guys were already there, you were prepared for it, you were open to it, then you started doing it. Now after right, so then we can we can also then get settled into that. Right. Correct. So oh, trade shows are back, but man, I did so good at the webinars, I'm just going to not go go to trade shows. Uh -huh. If we talk about the sublimation world, I, I'm not saying that that's the reason, but I'm kind of saying that's the reason you even even the shows that people are kind of going, oh, man, that they're back. You know, they've been there's not a lot of sublimation people there. And and I don't think it's because people aren't buying sublimation. I mean, what I see out there in social media, people are buying a lot of sublimation. Um, you know, I mean, you've got. Uh, craft stores that are selling sublimation printers right and, and so they're just buying it from a different place right and the people that were going to shows are like well i guess i'll go search the internet i i, I didn't see my favorite condi rep here right I, i'm not calling out condi i'm just using them as an example because that's what came up in topic today all of them are that way and so it's like okay you can have that growth mindset but then you if you settle, you could shut it back off again without knowing it. So you have to continuously, like David had said, it's about continuously improving every day. So, oh man, do I really need to look at going back to trade shows, right? People are getting tired of being on Zoom all the time. <laughs> that kind of thing. Well, so true enough. Sometimes, uh, and you've said this a thousand times, sometimes you have to touch it. You have to feel it, you know, yeah, and, yeah. And, uh, and get in front of people. Yep. 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 So, um, let's get, uh, let's see here. Let's get a couple more comments and then we're, we're, we're going to go into bonus time, Terry. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I blame me. All right. Um, Jan says, I just have three years to remind myself of 2028, 20, 2011 20, and 2020, the years that I not only pivoted, expanded and recreated myself, but also the three times in my career that I feel like I rebirthed my business. I'm truly grateful, trust me, um, but it wasn't easy and I never forget the bad times because from there come the good times, um, tr truly, yeah. So Jan, and I've been begging Jan to get on this show. So we're gonna, I'm gonna call you out again, Jan. I appreciate you being here. Don't <laughs> stop showing up just cause I'm calling you out, but man, I would love to have you on and let's talk about that more, okay? All right, um, biggest opportunity missed in business, attending, uh, trade, uh, attending, the classroom and and oh okay attending trade shows and the classroom okay i think that's what that says and then ramona says covid threw me into a panic i jumped onto a new income stream but i know now it wasn't isn't a good fit for me but it did what i needed to do when i needed it right it, it absolutely my my wife was reminding me yesterday that you know things people whatever they come into our lives at a at a time when we need them and and but that doesn't mean that we can't change right we can't learn we can't grow um and so like like ramon is saying there it, it was a fantastic learning experience she's got that experience now and now she knows what maybe wasn't a good fit for her in that moment so um well, I, look at look at uh, 22 years ago when i went to work at us screen and you were the sales manager and I, I made your life fairly miserable but look at us now <laughs> <laughs> 
No, you didn't. We had a heck of a good time. I made my own life miserable, but that was a whole different story. <laughs> it wasn't miserable. We had a heck of a good time, but boy, we, we sure were able to create some stories too. <laughs> we did indeed. So people are like, oh, Terry and Aaron with their stories again. All right. <laughs> well, before we get too far away from it then, Terry, let's, let's wrap it up. Thank you guys so much. <laughs> Eric says at least eight of them. At least eight stories. <laughs> there, are, there are eight <laughs> stories, everyone. <laughs> Just repackaged. <laughs> yeah, repackaged. All right. Well, Terry great show today thank you so much for uh, exploring that with me and just all the practical stories and, and advice that uh, hopefully you guys are able to take from that and all of you regulators thanks for your part of uh, bringing in in those stories but uh, terry where are you going to be headed out on the road here soon yes uh, absolutely my complete screen printing business course they all, always sell out by the way as i mentioned <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, i'm gonna be <laughs> yeah, I'm going to be at Workers Products in Phoenix uh, one month from now, uh, May 4th and 5th. And uh, I'll, I'll be in Chicago at Atlas Screen Supply on June 8th and 9th. And watch for all of my upcoming events at terrycombs.com. How about you, Aaron? Yeah. So um, first thing, I just want to make sure people are uh, checking out our Facebook page. It's uh, called Fall in Love with Your Business. So if you'll go to facebook.com forward slash groups, fall in love OSG, make sure that you're joined up over there. We talk about stuff like this in there all the time. Um, I had a, uh, a session in there actually out, out in the world, but uh, I do a lot more lives in that group. Um, so it's just, it's a, it's a space on Facebook where we, we avoid the blaming, complaining, excuse making, and we get into um, solutions. And, and I love that about the space. And so hopefully uh, you can join that and we're, we're growing all the time. Um, I mentioned after we talked about Fundamentals Live that I am offering a free seminar next week. Uh, there's Thursday, I uh, said Tuesday, Thursday and Saturday. So if you'll go to oursuccessgroup.com forward slash pricing, um, you can just register for it there. Just give us your, your, your name and email and then you'll, we'll send you the information. And these are live. This is not, I'm not, even though there's three of them, I'm going to be doing the same topic all three days and they're going to be live because I do want to make sure I'm answering questions um, and, and just getting all the information, a little bit of a taste of what we're going to be doing in person in June. Um, and then shortly after that, I will be heading to Dax Tinley Park and uh, I've got two classes there, fundamentals of uh, pricing your printing. So it's going to be similar to my, my seminar that I'm doing online, but again, in person is just so good. And, and we always get into different topics at each one of these. So <laughs> I, I think that's what I probably learned. One of the many things I learned from Terry is that even though we're kind of maybe sometimes sharing something similar, each class is completely unique and, and has its own path. Right. And, and I was always so rigid, like, Oh, this is my slide. I'm going to read all of it. Nope. <laughs> sometimes I get through all the slides. Sometimes I skip some slides. Sometimes just wherever the people want to go. So um, I'm excited to share that one. And then the fundamentals for small business growth. So go to DaxShow.com. And then uh, I'm going to just keep sharing it because that's my responsibility. But uh, Fundamentals Live is happening June 7th and 8th. Uh, we do need to get people signed up by April 15th. Uh, that way we can make sure that it is going to happen. Um, for some reason, we've been a little little slow. I really felt like we might have a, uh, a waiting list, but I'm not sure if I'm just not explaining it well. But uh, if you're thinking about it, at least reach out to me and let me know that that this is something that's on your your potential. And and again, I'm not going to try to talk you out of it. I, I just want to know if there's any way that I can help make sure because I know that there's going to be a huge amount of value here. So osg.link forward slash fun live June 7th and 8th. Um, you know, I know it's something that's never been done. And, and so maybe that's people are kind of waiting to go, oh, well, let's see how it goes. Here's the deal. If this doesn't go, we're going to have to regroup. So <laughs> this might be the only opportunity for you. <laughs> um, and then, uh, yeah, in the future, I'll be heading out to Graphics Pro Long Beach. We were talking before the show about Start Here Academy for them coming up too. So I'm looking forward to being at the Graphics Pro shows this year. But once we get more details, we'll we'll share that here. Cool. Um, and then, yeah, we'll, we'll leave that. I think that's good enough for me. I know I've got some other stuff. But uh, for Eric here, Terry, um, he is going to be out in Dax uh, at Tinley Park, Chicagoland area there. It's happening. Uh, the show itself is happening on the 19th and 20th. And you will find Eric teaching back to back, actually. So you get a double dose of Eric if you so choose, which I would highly recommend you so choosing that um, on the 20th. And he'll be talking, uh, covering vintage values and 
and digital detail. So again, uh, head over to DaxShow.com and get in on that fun. We, we can't wait to see it out there. So Terry, are you, uh, the, the chefs, you've put your final touches on it and the sauce is ready to deliver. And, and you've got yourself muted there. So I should have done the Spanish thing. <laughs> I, Sorry. I, I think dogs, about it, but I never do it. <laughs> one of the dogs was barking. So, <laughs> All right. but yes, yes, absolutely. I'm ready for a little secret sauce. All right. The secret sauce today, emulsions and no roadblocks to production. For the non-screen printers out there, emulsion is the photosensitive coating on a screen that is then exposed with UV light. So your artwork is on a film positive between the emulsion on the, on the screen and the UV light. When the emulsion is exposed to the light, it hardens. Where the UV light is blocked by the image on the film positive, the emulsion stays soft. Washing out the image with garden hose pressure, the image area washes away and, hard, and the hardened emulsion remains. So we have a screen ready for the press. You have three options for textile screen printers uh, and there are benefits and there are pitfalls with each one. The first being capillary film. Capillary film is a dry emulsion on a plastic carrier sheet. Applied to a wet screen, the emulsion adheres to the print side of the screen, the side that touches the garment. The advantage is, is a fast prep screen when you're in a pinch, plus uh, some specialty inks like gels require a thick emulsion layer. So a thick capillary film is ideal for that specialty ink. But for day-to-day -day printing, capillary film screens are not very durable and tend to break down with continued pressure of the squeegee across the screen mesh, except for fairly short production runs, uh, under 100 pieces. Uh, pure photopolymer over the past few years has been treated as the wonder product because it exposes very quickly. Depending on the exposure unit you use, it might take only 25 seconds to expose a screen. But as a production guy, I see a couple of drawbacks. If the ideal exposure time for a, for a, a photo uh, pure photopolymer is 25 seconds, exposing it for 30 seconds might overexpose and not wash out and any leak of UV light from an open door or window could ruin the screens before you ever expose them. Dual Cure Emulsion is a product that mixed with an activator before it's used um, on, the, on the same exposure unit that you expose your pure photopolymer at 25 seconds. It might take three minutes to expose the Dual Cure Emulsion, but going back to being a production guy, if I expose that screen for two and a half minutes, it's still okay. If I expose it for four minutes, probably still okay. So uh, I can also coat that dual cure screen out on my production floor as long as I don't allow any direct sunlight to hit the coated screen. So what does that mean to the production person who doesn't want to create roadblocks on the production floor? Dual cure is incredibly forgiving and very difficult for your employees to mess up the process. So on my production floor, it's the easy to work with and very forgiving dual cure emulsion. That's my secret sauce for today. Que lastima, lo siento. O el que se me ve pronto. You did it. Ah, I like it. Good job. <laughs> <laughs> all right well good stuff terry thank you very much that was delicious secret sauce terry let's uh let's wrap this up we've uh, come to the close of another show i just want to thank all the regulators for joining in the conversation um so again if you're a podcast i don't know if this, again is the right word but if you are a podcast listener make sure that every once in a while you pop over to our facebook page or on our youtube videos and, and you share your thoughts and comments and and just bring bring yourself into the into the conversation. I, I've been saying this a lot more lately, and I think I'm going to keep saying this quite a bit across the board of everything. Don't just hear about it, participate in it. Right. So um, we, let's, we let's make that, that happen. <laughs> All right. We also want to thank our show producer, Eric Campbell for pushing the buttons and turning the knobs and keeping us on track every day. Thank you, Eric. Yes, indeed. Thank you very much, Eric. Uh, next week, Terry, we are, um, 
I don't know. I'm getting a little gun shy here, but when we say this, but uh, next week we do have Ian Hinckley will be joining us talking about DGI Apparel's journey um, and their journey from MIT to garment decorating. So uh, not quite Ohio University, but you know, still up there. <laughs> his his proposal uh, saying MIT to garment decorating certainly intrigued me. So I'm looking forward to uh, to meeting and uh, talking with Ian. <laughs> yeah, I love I love talking to smart people. So. Um, we get to do that every every day on here. So thank you, you guys. Um, Terry, uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to next week for sure. Me as well. Until then, I'm Terry Combs. He's Aaron Montgomery. And that was the two regular guys. Here we go. We're out. <laughs> awesome. Thank you for listening to Two Regular Guys. Check out our website at tworegularguys.com. That's the number two, regularguys.com. You can also interact with us over at our Facebook page, facebook.com slash two regular guys, or send us a tweet, twitter.com slash two regular guys. And we have a YouTube page. You can find all that from our website, two regular guys.com. Thanks for tuning in, and we look forward to spending some time with you again next week.